All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at the second expansion to Istanbul called Letters and Seals. All right, so this is the more complex of the two expansions. All right, so just like the first expansion, this one doesn't really have modules. You just throw in all the components uh, into the base game and you're going to have a new experience. All right, so this one's all about delivering letters. All right, so instead of just getting resources and trading them in for rubies, we have a whole new system here where we're going to be delivering letters to the various people on the game board to either take double turns or to get gems. All right, so in this video, just like in the first expansion one, I'm going to go through the components in the base box and how to set it up. I'm going to go through all the rules. And then finally, at the end, we're going to come back for my thoughts. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's go over the components and how to set up the game. All right, so you are going to get five new tiles in this expansion. Uh, tile 25 is only used if you're playing the gigantic uh, Grand Bazaar variant with both the expansions. I'm not going to set it up this way. I'm going to talk about it during the thoughts section. But for right now, toss tile 25 back in the game box. All right. Then, just like in the first expansion, you got four new tiles. Shuffle it into the base game tile. Create a 4x5 grid randomly. Just a couple of rules make sure the fountain is one of the six tiles in the middle and make sure that tiles eight and nine are not in the same row or column or are closer than three tiles apart so like this is fine all right and now let's just set up these tiles all right so you can have your kiosk tile and these red uh i guess tiles are the kiosk tiles and you're gonna set them up on top of the uh, tile itself nothing special going on on 23 and 24 nothing to add and on the embassy 21 these are where you're going to get your letters you can either put the letters on the tile itself or put on the side of the board it does not really matter all right just a couple of extra things you do have a mailman courtier token he just acts just like the smuggler at the beginning of the game you're just gonna roll the dice and place him on that number that's fine and then we're gonna have our companions as well these guys are gonna be next to the game board and i'll show you during the rules how you pick them up but they're gonna give you extra options and gonna be placed on the game board and finally for setup you sort of have to make a decision you're gonna get a whole new stack of bonus cards okay you can either shuffle these into the base game deck and have one ginormous deck or play with just these letter and seal bonus cards now what I would suggest honestly just play with this deck the game's gonna be a bit more thematic and deals more with the letters but you have a choice there all right so let's go to the rules all right let's talk about the rules so the rules for this one are fairly complex compared to the first expansion so what i'm going to do is talk about the companions first then i'll talk about the letters and the mechanism for the letters and then we'll finally talk about the tiles themselves and how they work all right so what are companions this is a new mechanism so we each have our companions which are these square markers and the way these work is they're gonna act like your merchant but they can only work move one space so on your turn, you can either move your companion or your merchant. Now, how do you get your companion? Well, it's a little complicated. What you got to do is visit the fountain on one of your future turns. So let's say we're playing the game. I visit some places, so on and so on. And eventually I'll go on the fountain to activate the fountain. When that would happen, you would do like you would normally do and uh, sort of hoover back in all your uh, assistance back into your stack. But then you're going to take your companion from off the board and you're going to add him to the fountain. Now, in the future, if your companion's on the board, you can either move your companion one space horizontally or vertically and perform an action just as if he was the merchant or move your merchant one or two spaces just as per normal. All right, so I can move my companion one space and activate the space. Now he acts exactly the same way as a merchant. If other players' merchants are there, you're gonna have to pay the two coins. He interacts with all the other um, uh, tokens as well. So the, the mailman and the smuggler and the governor, and he activates the tile just like normal. Okay, uh, the only restriction is he doesn't count as a merchant. So if yellow will come here to perform this action, yellow doesn't have to pay red any money all right next we're going to talk about the uh, letter mechanism all right so the way this works so whenever you get letters they're sort of going to appear um, in front of you in your tableau type of area and you're going to have them in front of you and they're going to display a number in the top right these are the locations on the game board all right so let's see 
Uh, so let's say I had these two letters in front of me and one of them is a six. If my companion or my family member or my merchant walks through or lands on this number of tile, then what happens is I get to flip the tile over. All right, so by default, it's one seal, but by delivering the letter, it is now two seals. All right, so just to give you an example, if I'll move two times, perform this action while I visited number six, well, then I, I would take my number six tile that would be in front of me and flip it over. Okay, so the whole goal of these are to flip them over because they count as two seals instead of one. Now, what can you do with these seals? Well, I'm going to talk about it later. You can trade them in for gems, but more importantly is you can turn in three seals at any point and put them in a seal discard area to take another turn all right so if i did have this in front of me i can discard these three seals and take an extra turn all right so don't forget that rule it's very important all right that's pretty much the overhead for the rules there now let's just talk about all these new tiles and how they work okay so there's some fairly new mecha mechanisms going on here and change up the game quite a bit. So let's talk about the kiosk first, okay? By activating the kiosk, what you're gonna do is first you're gonna get a, a letter, all right? So you're gonna take a letter, put it in front of you. It always goes face up, all right? Once you deliver it, it goes face down, but you're gonna have it face up in front of you, all right? And next you're gonna display kiosk tiles equal to the number of players plus one. So if you're playing a three player game, you're going to show four different tiles. Now what you're going to do is starting with you and working around the table, each player is going to take one of these tiles and activate their bonus right away. So let's say you went first, you took this one, you activate the tile right away. Second player took this one, activated the tile. Third player took this one, activated the tile. And then the tile that's left over, well, you're going to get it. All right. So you're going to actually pick up two of these bonus tiles and activate them. So you're going to activate this and there you go. Okay. So that's how this spot works. All right. These going to, these are all going to go in a discard pile and they might run out. So you're going to shuffle up the discard pile and create a new draw pile when they do run out. Okay. So the auction house, another weird me mechanism over here. So here you're going to take one good of your choice. All right. And then you can have an auction, okay? So this sort of breaks up the game. Um, what you're gonna do is starting with your own bid, you're bidding for two bonus cards. All right, so you can say any bid, three, then you're gonna keep going around the table and everyone has to bid at least one coin more than the previous highest bid. All right, so if I bid three, the next person can say four, the next person can pass, so he's out of the bidding. Then it comes back to me and I say five, and then green can decide whether he wants to pass or go six. Let's say he went six. And then I would decide whether I wanted to pass or bid again. Let's say I pass. Then green would, green would win the bid and he would get the two cards. All right, so you would take two cards off the top of the deck and you would keep them. Now, there's sort of a weird mechanism on who pays who when you're doing the bidding. If the person who lands on the tile who activated the auction wins the bid, the money they pay goes to the bank. If any other player wins the bid, the money they pay goes to that player. All right, so sort of two situations happening. It's a weird tile, but don't forget those rules. All right, next we're gonna talk about Secret Society. Pretty simple, turn in six seals. So remember, you're delivering these letters to get seals. So it's either three completed seals or a combination of uh, um, uncompleted and completed seals to six. Okay, and you're going to get a uh, gem. You get to take the gem just like in the coffee trader from the first expansion from any of the kiosks, uh, from any of the merchants on the game board. Uh, if you are the first person to deliver the seals, you'll actually get $3 as well. If you're the second person, you'll get $2. And if you're the third person, you get three, uh, $1. And any other player would just get the gem and not get the money. Uh, I sort of track these by taking a coin from the general supply and just covering up the space when somebody got that bonus. And lastly, the m probably easiest tile to talk about is the embassy. You're just going to straight up take two of the uh, letters from the general supply and add them to your personal supply. Alright, those are pretty much all the rules. Uh, the only one I really need to talk about last is the mailman slash courtier that's going to walk around the game board. He's going to act exactly like the smuggler. When you visit him, 
you'll get a letter from the general supply if you pay two coins if you don't pay two coins well you don't get the letter all right and that's pretty much all the rules all right quick review time here for the second expansion to istanbul called letters and seal so this one as if you watch both videos you can tell it's a little more involved a lot new more rules to take in and the game switches up quite a bit all right so uh, for this one we're going to be taking letters delivering them trying to trigger extra turns or trying to turn in six seals to gain rubies slash money as well all right so what do I like? What I don't like about this one? It's a great expansion, right? I do enjoy it. The only problem is it has a huge overhead and it has some weird bits uh, attached to it, right? So let's start off by talking about the auction house and the kiosk first. So the beauty of the base game and the first expansion is the game is really snappy because um, it's not really multiplayer solitaire, but you sort of plan out your moves and you're just moving at a rapid pace, all right? With this expansion, the game is gonna last a bit longer. Uh, in my experience, maybe 20, 25 minutes more because, you know, every time somebody goes to the kiosk or the auction house, you're actually pausing the game, all right? And then you're gonna have sort of a bid if you're in the auction house or you're gonna have sort of a drafting system if you're in the kiosk now i'm not saying these are bad things i love these mechanisms all good things is just keep in mind the game will drag on a little bit more and what's going to happen is the kiosk you're doing a drafting thing where you're going to be drafting bonuses and in the auction house this can take a while but you're going to be bidding coins to grab two bonus cards and you know what that can be significant if somebody can get a couple of bonus cards for uh for cheap all right um speaking of bonus cards i actually love the concept of having a brand new deck uh, for just this expansion um, In my experience, it doesn't change the game too much if you include it into the base game or just play with these themselves uh, I really like the base game ones anyway So, you know if you want a gigantic deck and you don't want to shuffle them, you know shuffle them all together and there you go You're ready to go All right, and There you go. I, I don't really much have anything else to say. Uh, I do like these uh, letter mechanism uh, where you do have to go deliver letters to the random people on the game board I find it's kind of thematic and it's cool. You're running around getting uh, goods and stuff But you're also delivering letters and you're getting seals for it uh, The double action could be really powerful So keep that in mind if you're getting a lot of double actions That's just more actions you're doing than other players, right? So uh, delivering letters could be quite lucrative, right? You can also uh, after three letters delivered you can turn them in for a ruby which would be nice um for this one i did forget to mention it during the uh, overview here you are racing to six rubies just like in the first expansion um that's just because again with the seals you can get to your uh, extra ruby quite fast anyway okay and i think the last thing to really talk about is just the companion i do love this mechanism i actually tried playing with this mechanism with the first expansion and it works all right so this is something that is universal you can play this with even just the base game if you wanted so uh keep in mind you go to the fountain the first time you put your uh companion on the game board and now from now on you sort of have a couple of choices you either move your merchant or you move your companion i really like it um Almost an auto include in all my games depends on uh, if I'm playing with uh, gamers or for with family members and that'll sort of decide what I want to do with this one. But uh, great addition. I really like it. All right. And those are my thoughts on the second expansion. Uh, overall, if you're playing with gamers, play the second expansion. There's a five minute overhead added uh, 20 minutes to the game. A bit more complexity. It's pretty good. Um, if you're playing with uh, newer gamers or people just getting their foot into Istanbul, play with the first expansion. Really simple, no rules overhead. Just get going and the game flows really fast. All right, so those are my thoughts. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment on my YouTube channel. We'll see you in the next game. Later.